Hi guys! How you doing? Oh. Alright. What? What? Uh, I've, uh, I've got I've got that work crew in. Half past Talks four. About work crew. They're they're breaking down the studio. They're breaking what? down the HQ really. I already work for you. This is the Brainwave Studio where we do the podcast. Yeah, let, let, let's get inside the booth. In the booth. A sore tooth? Ian, help me out what? here. I can't hear what he's saying. Okay, look. Grab my hand. This way. I don't touch me. I don't know where you've been. I, oh. Okay. Okay. At least... Well, this is soundproof, right? So, there's a, a little bit, at least. Look, I've got the work crews in. Redoing the HQ like we talked about. Got the memo, like, right? Like we talked about. Yep. What? I've definitely talked this about this with you. We're going to redo the HQ for the new year, yeah? We've made so much money off the Patreon this year and, and our Amazon affiliate links that I thought I'd like, redo the HQ. You're going to go and have a... Ian, this is a family show. Come on. I... So... One... I... So, sorry, Ian. Sorry. I um, had my headphones in. Was I talking a bit loud? Sorry. I, I didn't... A little bit. I, little, uh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting the HQ redone, right? I was They're wondering. going to do the whole thing. Top to bottom. I was wondering, I came in and um, there were a lot of people and I wondered what was going on. And I saw Ian and and you said, Ian, something like, um, you d- you didn't know either, but um, something about a memo. I mean, I couldn't remember. And then I put my headphones in and then you started shouting at me. Uh, you guys have been reading the memos I've been sending you all year, right? The daily memos. Of course. The ones that are real important and you should read. Do you want us to go ahead and start... Smashing up the building? I I I, I, I barely trust you, want, you to Jamie. speak into this microphone, let alone hit things with a gigantic hammer. Well, um, I I could I'm smash not reading some my memos. Things. I mean, it's just disrespectful. I could <sighs> I could smash some things. But why don't we smash up this podcast? Hey, how's that for a link? Nice. This is Brainwaves episode 63, bringing you the best in board game and tabletop gaming news. These are the headlines for the week of 21st December 2020. Kickstarter ends in confrontation. Gen Con looks to 2021, and Alexa catches a hot potato. All this and more on this episode of Brainwaves. It's been quite a while since Brainwaves has reported on shady goings on in the world of Kickstarter, but fear not, everyone, we've got another one. Confrontation, the classic skirmish miniatures game, was kickstarted by Son de Tour back in 2018. The project has seen numerous delays, and now it seems that it will never come to fruition as Son de Tour has filed for bankruptcy. There have been no updates on the project since the revelation that came through from the company, but it seems that the situation has been developing over the course of this year. It's come to the point where the French police are now involved and the company is being investigated for potential fraud. What I'm going to do now is read from one of the replies to the Kickstarter campaign. There seems to be a group inside the comments basically organising to basically do a sort of class action lawsuit against the company. Dear all, here are several important news of the last few days concerning our action against Son de Tour. We have been contacted by the judicial police so that we can pass on to them all the complaints collected so far. It is no longer necessary for us to continue collecting complaints. As agreed, we will destroy all your data from our data systems once the police have acknowledged receipt of the data. The Paris Public Prosecutor's Office has opened a preliminary investigation for breach of trust. This investigation has been entrusted to the French Assets Recovery Office, PIAC, in French, uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. Would you like me to give it a shot? Yes, Jamie, would you like to give it a shot? Plateforme de identification de avoir criminel. Beautifully done. A judicial police service with jurisdiction over the entire national territory. The investigation has been open for several months. A solution for information and collection of complaints from contributors to the project's Confrontation Classic and Aventures Le Jeu is currently being developed by the Public Prosecutor's Office, supported by the PIAC. We thank you all for your investment in this action, and are pleased to have been able to make it a success. We have confidence in the investigation that is underway, and we hope that light will soon be shed on this case. Signed, Team Shannis, who appear to be the group inside the comments that are sort of organising together. Uh, it ends with, P.S. The LinkedIn profile of the former director of Sontatur is worth it. We haven't looked at that, but we'll put a link to it in the show notes. 
Uh, we'd like to say that we'd love to talk to anyone involved with this action against the company. We only came across this story a couple of hours before the cast is recording on the 18th of December. Um, and uh, I've put out a thing on Twitter saying I'd love to talk to anyone involved with this class action lawsuit. We also invite Sondateur to reply and come on the cast and talk about what's happened and if there's going to be any recourse for backers to get their money back. This is just... Another reminder, I mean, we've banged this drum before, that Kickstarter is never a store, much as it kind of looks like one, and for some companies is effectively used as a pre-order store. But there's always the possibility of things going horrifically wrong, and that's kind of what's happened in this case. We're intending to look into Kickstarter a bit more next year. There's a few things that have been brought to our attention recently. We might do a special on sort of Kickstarters that have failed and Kickstarter itself. We're still putting that together, and whether that'll come to fruition or not, I don't know. But yeah, just like a real reminder that Kickstar is, it's a gamble at all times. Going on to slightly more cheery news here, we're looking ahead to 2021, as is Gen Con. Indeed. With vaccines on the horizon, the gaming community is starting to look ahead to 2021, and is hopeful that some conventions can go ahead. We reported on the last cast that Gamma, the Games Manufacturing Association, had chosen to stay online only in the first quarter of the year. GenCon has now put up tentative dates for August of next year, the 6th through the 8th of August, with caveats around their ability to go ahead. Shortly after announcement of the dates, GenCon said they were postponing badge registration and event submission for the event. As GenCon sells out pretty fast and accommodation is notoriously hard to come by, we are sure this has left a lot of people feeling very wary about attending. We have absolutely no doubt that Gen Con are tied into a contract for yeah. that venue, however. So, Jamie, Ian, when do you think events will be safe to attend? Is 2021 a write-off? I, I think uh, Jamie has answered both those questions. <laughs> I realise that's that's not a heartening thing, but I think 2021 yeah. is going to be many things, but one of them is going to be, I think, conventions and companies taking stock and going, right, now we have seen what yeah. the pandemic and the coronavirus can do. It's not going away. Just hope that the vaccine is going to have a wider distribution to see how it's going to affect how we carry out our conventions and how we can make it more accessible in this, you know, I'm calling it this post-pandemic world. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be restrictions probably through most of 2021 unfortunately i hate to say that but it is most likely the truth i mean once the most vulnerable are vaccinated there'll probably be some easing of restrictions you might be able to meet up play some games that kind of thing but everyone's going to be wary about attending a con where tens of thousands of people are turning up yeah that's just everyone's going to be wary for at least next year and like jamie says 2022 yeah probably conventions will proper properly get back to normal but 2021 i can't see it personally i see one ray of light i think i think later in the year i think past june i think we might start seeing some conventions pop up again i think we might this is a possibility i think you know that six month window again this is based on pretty much nothing but some blind optimism uh that we have some time to take stock and maybe start seeing i said seeing conventions pop up again maybe in a slightly reduced format maybe a nice kind of split between uh, some in person and some online functionality how that is going to be divvied up remain would remain to be seen but i think it's a way of easing people back in if it is going to go ahead again this year this is my rampant speculation again as always yeah, I can see me coming through to Glasgow Games Festival that happens next year, for instance, because that happens in November. Maybe getting down to Dragon Me in December next year, but anything before that seems like... I mean, I'd love to see Games Expo. I'd love to go down and see people and, like, you know, eat food, drink with people and, like, have, have a good time, but I can't see Games Expo going ahead in June. Not really. And especially with the added pro- complexity of Brexit, where... Who knows how many companies from Europe are actually going to be able to get over. Yeah, it's it's not going to be a great year yeah. for conventions, and I think everyone should kind of brace themselves for that fact. Jamie, could you please do the next article? 
on previous podcasts, we have covered Alexa, the voice-activated assistant, and her many dealings with uh, board game companies. We've talked about Paizo, uh, with Starfinder, we've talked about Ticket to Ride, we've talked about Escape Rooms, and now, now Alexa has partnered with Big Potato Games, makers of Giant Brain and Brainwave's favourite Scroll, amongst many others. And they are bringing voice versions of some of their favourite games to the platform. Now, teaming up with Alexa specialist Vocala, you can now play Linky, What Came First, Obama Llama, and its smaller seasonal cousin Santa Banter, all on Alexa. So all you need to do is say, Alexa, play Big Potato Games. I'm never, never going to get tired of doing that. I'm sorry. <laughs> With that being said, I think Big Potato has some pretty great PR uh, bods working there. I mean, they came up with the board game vending machine, which was a fantastic idea. And, I mean, the future is going to hopefully get better for... I mean, it's pretty good right now. Hopefully it's going to get even better for Big Potato Games and their wonderful PR. We're not sponsored by them. We just... I can't speak for the other two, but I quite... I really enjoy Squirrel. It's one of my favourites. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they were nice enough to send us a copy of the Likewise. Blockbuster Party game that we reviewed, and it's really good fun. It's excellent. You're wonderful. And they just seem like lovely people. Yep, and we'd like to just say a very big thank you to... Okay, we'd like to say a very big thank... We'd like to t- We'd like to say... Ian, Ian, you said this was a soundproof booth. On you go. On you I go. mean, it's, it's pretty soundproof, but I, I'm not exactly sure. What, I think they've gotten down to the basement. Hmm. Uh, I, should probably, I should probably go and check that out, right? With you know, yeah, yeah go, 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 because because I yeah. can't reach Sam. So on you go. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll be back. Get on with the news while I'm, while I'm gone. Okay. okay. Now on to the news. First, first up, the news that senior game dev Max Brook has left Fantasy Flight Games after nine years. Brooks worked on many of Fantasy Flight Games licenses, including Arkham Horror. Twilight Imperium co-developed the Star Wars RPG and was lead mechanics designer on the rebooted Legend of the Five Rings RPG. His most recent responsibilities were relaunching the second edition of X-Wing, where he was lead designer and responsible for the long-term vision and game balance. Unlike the rest of the X-Wing team, he is not moving to Atomic Mass Games with the property, but setting out on his own. So, Jamie, that's a fairly senior departure in FFG from their Mm. kind of mechanics division. Do you reckon more news about the internal goings on of FFG or just I mean I th- turn it's very I think it'd be easy to go oh it doesn't it doesn't look like things are good oh I don't know about fantasy flight but at the same time yeah he's working there for nine years he's done a heck of a lot with them some major licenses exactly. I know you know I I knew you were you were excited even just mentioning the words Twilight Imperium oh yeah <laughs> I th- I th- I think I think he. I think he's just moving on to do other things. I, I don't yeah. think that it's like fantasy flights of trouble because he's jumping ship. He's moving on. I mean, if you look at you know, there are certain other prolific game designers who've done very well, and they've been with companies for a lot less, yeah. in a similar role. But um, you know, I I think we'd all wish him the very best. If if he listened yeah, to this, oh, it'd be lovely. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't think there's. Yeah, nine years is a long tenure for anyone in this business and as he said the number the number of stuff that he worked on i mean the star wars rpg not forgetting that that is was that three or four separate books each covering different like sides of the star wars universe oh really (sighs) okay um everything's totally fine definitely 100% 100% fine. I think we should maybe move our discussions to RPG Corner, you know, the other end of the building, far away from um, uh, the things that are totally fine. Totally, totally fine. So let me get this straight. We are moving away because from things the things are fine. that are totally fine. 100% A-OK. Couldn't be better. We'll go out the other door, by the way, not this one. Yep, yeah, definitely go that way. Faster. Ian, Ian yeah. can you not push me? Uh, no, okay. no, 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 much faster. Ian, 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 okay, I mean, okay, RPG Corner. What's in this corner? Looks like RPG Corner. Books. Rules.
We haven't been in there in a while, have we? It's a bit kind of dusty. And has, has someone been eating the scenery in here? Like, there's there's two marks on the on the sofa. Ian, Jeremy I think Irons' you're... teeth marks. Ian, I think you're scrabbling for a very, very. Uh... <laughs> I like no, it. I can't think. Yeah, no, it is pretty good actually. Not too long ago, we reported on Wizards of the Coast looking to get Dungeons and Dragons back on both the small and the big screen. And it now looks like things are starting to move uh, forward with a film version of Dungeons and Dragons, as young Captain Kirk himself, Chris Pine, has been linked to the forthcoming film. Uh, Jamie is basically just hoping that there's going to be a Jeremy Irons uh, cameo at some point in the film. Yes, yes. <laughs> Chris Pine, I know he's been in a number of other films uh, with a number of recurring roles. However, my first time I first saw him was in the 2009 Star Trek film, the film that introduced me to Star Trek properly as a fandom and something that I'm, I've got a, a, a lot of um, a lot of love for that film. Okay, uh, and good. if you have any, if you have any responses to that, please forward it to Jamie, uh, and the email address will be somewhere in the podcast because, well, I quite like it. And if you think that makes me a bad Star Trek fan. Go listen to Fleet Waves, which is my spin-off Star Trek-based podcast. I thought it was called Trek Waves. Uh, no, that, no, that's, no, that's hiking with some hikers. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It was, not, was it not Star Waves? Oh, no, is that the, astro- is that the astrology cast? No, that's Star Wars. Astronomy. Wave. Oh, astronomy. I'm sorry. I get so confused with all these spin-offs. Yeah, um, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to keep track. Even I forget what I'm doing half the time. You should be listening to Trackcast, where I keep track of Jamie's podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jamie, put, da- put down the polyhedrals to pick up the dreidel and tell us about the next piece, please. We're recording this in December, of course. Now, a lot of the Western world is focusing on Christmas, but I would like to be clear that we are not forgetting other culture important festivals such as Diwali which was at the end of November and Hanukkah which on the night of recording which is the 18th of December is the last night of Hanukkah for this year uh, and I hope if there are any Jewish listeners that you had a lovely Hanukkah now this is we generally don't do stories about games that have just come out or or this is the le- latest product release or you know this game is about to come out. This one, however, took my eye. We have Doyakite, which is an anthology of tabletop RPGs written and illustrated by Jews about the way we see our Judaism. Now, Doyakite is the Yiddish word for hearness, but that uh, is a very malleable definition. Let's kind of put it that way. From the Kickstarter page, where it was run earlier this year, uh, hearness can be interpreted in many ways. We, the developers, take it to mean that a Jewish person's ideology, practices, and traditions are a product of their environment, and it is these differences in background and knowledge from sources around the world that make the Jewish people so stalwart. So, organised by game designers J.R. Goldberg and Riley Rethal, they have brought on board 11 different designers, so it's featuring games from Jews of completely dissimilar backgrounds. Their goal to not only show how Judaism can be highlighted through play in a multitude of ways, but also show that despite the inherent differences, despite upbringings, they all share the same idea of doyakite. So I'm not going to give you all the tabletop RPGs that are in there. I'm going to give you a choice few. One is called, If You Can't Take the Heat, Get Out of the Ring, a two-player game about being in a wrestling match with God. Uh, There is Christmas Day, a freeform LARP about a Jewish family at a Chinese restaurant on Christmas Day. And, <laughs> yes. and awesome. Lunch Rush, a Geschmack RPG, where you are workers in a very busy Jewish deli dealing with interesting customers using your stats of Chutzpah, Suris, Gesund, and Yiddish Kop. Now, Doyakite is out on itch. Uh, so check it out, because I think it's a really nice little bit different uh, and very interesting by the sounds of it. There's one I didn't talk about, which is everyone's playing Gollum. Not Gollum, Lord of the Rings character. That's unfair and slightly culturally insensitive. Gollum. Uh, and it's how they protect a town and how you interpret the commandments that have been placed inside you. I I, I really like all these. I really like, like these things. So, yeah. I, th- I think Itch is a really turning into a really interesting place for some of the more innovative things that are happening in tabletop gaming right now 
uh, had an interview recently with Anna Blackwell, who has things like Delve out on there, and she pointed me towards a few different games on there that sound really, really cool. And there's a lot of really, really interesting stuff going on in the RPG scene, and it's definitely worth checking out. Really cool things in there. But I believe our our uh, interest, a little dip into itch, is not over. I believe, Ian, you have some news from another side of itch. Absolutely. So, if you are living under a rock, you probably still know that Cyberpunk 2077 has recently been released and unreleased. (laughs) This computer game is set in the far future and has come under a lot of criticism for the crunch the company puts its staff under, the misogyny and transphobia present, the cultural appropriation, racism, and just quite frankly being absolutely chock full of bugs right out of the gate. It's worth noting that this game has made huge profits despite all that. It has also been recently pulled from Sony PlayStation Store due to the level of bad feedback they've been getting, and probably the fact that they said, hey, go bother Sony about refunds. Yeah. <laughs> did they actually do that? <laughs> Smart business, yeah. Maybe. They actually did that. It's not been great. Yeah. To counter some of that, a group of creators has put together Games Jam on Itch, which try to reimagine what cyberpunk can be in the modern era while sidestepping a lot of the nastier tropes that have been cropped up around the genre, in particular the fetishization of Asian cultures. One of the hosts, W.H. Arthur, said, Asian cultures are often fetishized in nerd culture, and you can find a lot of Asian-themed games without any Asian creators on drive through RPG. W.H. Arthur also said, Earlier this year, I hosted an Asian martial arts jam, game jam for Asian creators to create martial arts TTRPG with our own voices. Asian cyberpunk jam is kind of a sequel to that. The jam is accepting applicants right now and will stay open until January the 31st, 2021. So go check it out. Sounds great. Yeah, it sounds really good. Yeah, love a bit of cyberpunk, so I'll be checking that one out myself. Well, before we round up the cast for the year, we'd just like to give a big shout out to our patrons, the ex- our, and especially our executive producers, the Lucky Sparrow Gaming Cafe and Sean Newman from the Game A Lot team. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the cast here, reading articles, supporting us in any way you can. It's been really, really appreciated. We'd just like to thank everyone who's read articles, listened to the cast, shared us about, and generally supported us over what has been an, a crazy year. It's been great to see everyone out there and and chat chat to people. We've got some big plans for next year, part of which is uh, obviously the rebuilding of the Brainwaves HQ. Uh, And and I think that's going totally fine. I'm just going to check out the door to make sure everything out there is going fine. Um, While while you're out there, Ian, you know what? I've got a roundup of the Monopoly news for this year. Oh, thank goodness. See, yeah, we we all need this. Um, Now, I'm going to... Now, what's happening this year? Now, we have covered quite a lot of Monopoly news. Um, Uh, Guys, uh, guys, um, uh, so, um, you know that duck and cover thing that you get on airplanes? Or, like, you know, from lava? Is this another memo? I, I, I need you to duck and cover, like, now. No, but I've still got Monopoly news to do. See, the important... 